Barb, where are you coming in from? Hi, can you hear me okay? Yep. Hey, I'm in Sun Valley, Idaho. <laughs> well, there, how about that? There you go. Is it sunny? In the valley? Sunny? No, <laughs> it's um, 6 p.m. And um, I'm, I'm um, hanging out here, hunkering down with my daughter, son-in-law, and grandson. Howdy, everybody. Hi, Sam. Hi, Mary Beth. Hi, Robert. Oh, no video from you. No video? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, there I am. There you oh, are. Okay. <laughs> There you are. I had to click the, the button, the right button. Hi, Kim. Hi, Victoria. Hi. Hi, Sandy. Kim. Gentlemen. I thought I saw Mary Jo on earlier. But... Yes, I'm here. Oh, hi, Mary Jo. Hello, hello. <laughs> and there's Mary Lou's head. Mary Lou. Hi, you're all here too. Back up a little bit. All right. <laughs> well, I am really excited about this. I'm so, so excited to have our first Zoom worship. I'm going to give us another minute just in case folks are having trouble getting on. So um, we'll start at, let's, we'll, we'll start at 502. So continue to chat and all that good stuff. And we'll start in two minutes just to give folks a, a little time in case they're having trouble getting on Zoom and we'll get We'll get this thing started. I'm so happy to see everybody. <laughs> what happened to Victoria? She's there. She oh. has cameras. Yeah, I don't see a picture. Yeah, she's up. She's <laughs> she's on there twice. Oh. Do I need to do here? And then oh, there she is. Okay, hi, Victoria. Hi. Hi. <laughs> they wanted to be on too, so. Oh, there she is. That works. Yeah. Your camera with boys on it. You're not screaming that. <laughs> oh, look at those beautiful poinsettias. <laughs> Auntie Awesome. Auntie Awesome. I see two little guys there too with Victoria. One with a tie on. I did see them. <laughs> Ooh, I don't know who Auntie Awesome is, but I already love that that is their handle on here. That makes me so happy. <laughs> Welcome, Auntie Awesome. <laughs> Can you see me? This is Rachel. Yay, we don't see you, but we see. I'm Auntie Awesome. <laughs> That's wonderful. Hi, everybody. Merry Christmas Eve. Hi, Merry oh, Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> oh. Grandma's calling. And tonight, I'm here. And I think tonight, this is the night that Santa comes. And tonight, Santa, come. Gonna come. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I'm a little excited. Yep, a little excited. A lot excited. Yay! I can't wait to. I'll wait till my mom gets back. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll get started with this. I welcome everybody to tonight's Zoom worship service. This is exciting because it is a first for us to try and do something like this. And um, I fully expect that we're going to have some joyful moments where things don't go as planned and there will be <laughs> hiccups and all of those good things. But um, I think that's also part of the, the Christmas story is there are some hiccups and things that don't go as planned and it still is great. So I welcome you and I am so, so excited to be experiencing tonight a very special night during a very 
special year um, with all of you here in this virtual space and in your individual spaces. Um, the way that it will go, I'm going to pull up and, sc and screen share a PowerPoint and that will kind of move us through. So you'll see if it's time for you to do your reading, you'll see your name come up and things like that. And, um, and you will see that there is um, a candle cam and that's going to be where the uh, Christ candle is lit um, in my home. And, um, and then I invite you when we light that to light the Christ candle in your homes as well. So, um, so without further ado, thank you, welcome, and let us worship God. Let's see, and let us figure out a screen share here. <laughs> okay, there we go. my screen share oh no I, sorry this is like i said there it is it's right in the very middle of things okay here we go and share can you see my screen yes yes fantastic okay then let us worship perfect Okay, please join me for the call to worship. This year we dreamed of world peace. Okay. We, we dreamed, dreamed of, of deep, deep breath, breath, breath and restful breath. sleep. Lasts and suffering that passes. We, we dreamed, dreamed of doors open wide and that we an end to disease. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so sorry. I hit this. This is this is what I am talking about. Sorry about that. <laughs> we'll get this started again in a second here. I apologize. Okay. Sorry. All right. And um I think that it might go better also if we mute our mics in between, even though it's nice to have that call and response. I think if we all mute our mics so that we can hear the speakers, then we'll get this started again. Sorry about that. I was trying to mute my mic and that's what happened. That would be really helpful. Can you guys hear us okay without a microphone? Uh, Kim, do you want to play it from current slide on the top left there? And it'll get bigger. Okay, I'm going to start. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Please join us in the call to worship. This year, we dreamed of world peace. We dreamed of deep rest and restful sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We, we dreamed, dreamed of doors open wide and, and a cure to, to disease. disease. We dreamed because to dream is to believe. For, For to, to dream, dream is to hope, hope and to, to hope dream is to see. see. So make room in your being to dream yet again of, of a, a world, world without fear and, and a God, God that, that draws near. near. For it is almost Christmas. Love, Love is almost, almost here. here. May we dream to see and hope to believe. Let us worship holy God. Can I come up? Yeah. Just a second. Let me get us hooked up here. Same. Kim, take yours off mute. Yeah. Can can we hear it now? I'm not sure. Is it? Uh... I can't hear anything. Okay. Let me restart the share and see if I can make that. Like I said, there will be hiccups. We'll get through this. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Let's see. And share screen. I'm all of friends. Um. 
Mom, can you mute yours? Mostly for Amanda and Chris. Mom, Carol? Uh, they're mostly for Amanda and Chris. Carol, can you mute yours? For Amanda and Chris. <laughs> okay. it just kept blooping. So we'll move on to the next little part. Can I please have lay leaders, Carrie, Molly, and Dot? Hello. Hi. Okay. Can you guys hear us? No, where's the candle? Oh, we're okay. we'll go back. Hello. Oh. Can you hear us? We can. Okay, good to know. Okay. In the beginning, God dreamed of a beautiful world. In Egypt, the Israelites dreamed of freedom. In the wilderness, the people dreamed of safety. In Jerusalem, the people dreamed of a Messiah. In Bethlehem, the shepherds and wise men dreamed of a new beginning. Then, several years later, Jesus walked this earth and dreams came true. The poor had food. The forgotten and ignored were seen. The children were welcomed. Everyone was invited 
to the table, and the world has never been the same. So tonight, we are those who dream. Tonight, we dream the same dreams of our ancestors before us. Tonight, we dream of justice and mercy, of love and kindness, of peace and hope. Tonight, we dream of a God that draws near to us out of unfailing love. May the, this candle be a reminder that there will be a day when every dream will be fulfilled. And until then, we will be those who dream. Let us worship, worship, worship holy God. Yeah. Holy God. <laughs> Thank you. God, if we listen closely, we can almost hear the angels sing. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the bleats of sheep following shepherds and the hooves of confused barn animals. If we listen closely, we can almost 
hear the innkeeper say, no room, no room. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the star whisper, follow me. If we listen closely, God, we can almost hear you. So as we turn to your word, holy writer, don't let us miss a thing. The smell of the hay, the cool of the air, the way Mary cherished this wild dream in her heart. We want to hear it all. We don't want to miss a thing. So today we pray, can you help us listen closely? Amen. This reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. The next reading is from Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. This is little baby Jesus. <laughs> Thank you. 
in those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I, see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there is with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the lying child in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, and it had been told to them. We come to you tonight with dreams tucked into our pockets, admitting that at times it feels risky to dream. At times it feels risky to ask for too much, to believe in that which we cannot see. So instead of make, instead we make wishes on stars and search for luck in clover fields. Instead of sinking into you, we try to control the narrative. However, somewhere rumbling deep in our heart, there is a dream of a better world trapped like a caged bird. Open our eyes to you in our midst. Give us the confidence of Mary to sing into the mystery. Dust your dream for us off the shelves of our hearts until once more, we are those who dream. 
Amen. <laughs> I heard the bells on Christmas Day. <laughs> Oh, that was beautiful. It was so beautiful. I love that song. So tonight I ask, what is it about this story of Christmas that we know so well? And it's still, what is it about it that we still have ways that we read it that surprise us? How is it that each time we hear it, it seems like a new detail stands out? Or maybe it's what's not in there that we notice this time. Perhaps it's because we've like smooshed the birth narratives together in our mind. So when we read one, we're shocked that it doesn't include the details from the other. So when we read Luke, we're like, wait, but what is it that, ha wait, doesn't something else happen? And we're thinking of Matthew or when we read Matthew, we're thinking of what happens in Luke. And so we're positive that we know the whole thing, but we've kind of like made this, I don't know, like you take all the Play-Doh, I say this as a mom, you take like all the globs of Play-Doh and smush them together and they become something different. And so we've got, you know, this story that we think we know, but we also, every time we read it, it kind of changes a little for us in our minds, depending on what's going on in the world. And this year, as I was reading Luke's account of the birth of Jesus, the questions that came up for me were no doubt informed by like all of this oddness of this year. And I, I don't know if you can hear my dogs, but they're also participating in worship tonight. They're, they're definitely cheering me on for this. So if you hear barking, just I apologize for them. So we've this year, the questions that come up for me were like, you know, really formed by all of the stuff we're, we're kind of sitting in this year. 
And I've been paying more attention to the absolutely bizarre way that we welcome the Messiah into the world, the Messiah. I mean, in the Luke text, it's also a census year. And so having just filled out my, you know, my census in the spring and, you know, all of us have done that um, and answered what I could about my neighbors when the census taker showed up and we're like, do you know who your neighbors were? And I was like, I don't know anything about them. They have two really cute dogs, but that's all I can tell you, you know, or um, all the times that Renee reminded us all year long to fill out the census. Like that's, that's what's in my mind this year when I read about registering and, um, and them having to make this trip. So, you know, that also hits in a different way this year. And um, it's, it's a little bit different because the census came to me. I filled it out online here in my living room. And even for my neighbors who didn't fill theirs out and they came looking for them and I had to say, I just know they have really cute dogs. Like the census came to them. In this story, it's interesting that, that Joseph had to go to be registered, right? He had to go. As a branch of David's family tree, he had, it was his job to go, to get up, pack everything and leave and go to Bethlehem. So like there's some, 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 some government decree to go do this, a mandate. And Joseph goes, but there isn't the infrastructure to support all, support all the people who are also traveling and also registering at this time. There's no room. This part of the birth narrative also hit me in a really funny way this year as we're waiting in a sea of news stories about inadequate protection of people by their government during a time of disaster. I mean, some stories never change. They're not prepared for the influx of whatever it is. And there's something that's going on with this. And so we can easily imagine the frustration experienced by everyone as Mary and Joseph look from place to place to place to find that everywhere is booked. Imagine how the innkeepers feel unprepared for this, you know, huge influx of folks looking for rooms and how exhausting it must have been to have to turn people away, especially after those people had been bounced from one place to another to another. And I'll draw one more quick, funny comparison here to our time. I mean, have you been traveling recently and tried to find a public bathroom during this stay at home order? I think we can all imagine the um, frustration and discomfort of having like bodily functions that have to happen when there's nowhere to go. <laughs> and if you've had that experience during this last nine months, and you can probably easily sympathize with Mary and Joseph as the urgency becomes clear, there is nowhere to go, but still physical needs exist. A baby is gonna be born, no matter if there's a place to go or not. And so this year, especially that ridiculous nature of a king, a Messiah, the son of God being born in like a food trough or, you know, surrounded by animals. Mary in her most tender and vulnerable moment, giving birth somewhere just completely unfamiliar. And depending on how we're telling that story, you know, it's in a barn surrounded by animals. And they're in the weirdest and most extreme space anyone could imagine for childbirth. There we welcome Jesus. It's, it's absurd. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. And that's how we start this whole thing. I mean, the whole, whole thing. This is how it all begins. That's how the divine became human. That's the story. It starts in the most inconvenient way possible. There's no comforts in this rustic makeshift nursery. And as we are worshiping this evening, you know, and possibly about to jump from this Zoom into another Zoom to celebrate Christmas with family, you know, and things like that, we are perfectly positioned to see all of this from a new perspective. The strangeness of Christ's birth away in a manger 
we are in some completely different settings than we've ever, ever been on a Christmas Eve. I mean, even though I'm pretty okay with PowerPoint, that, you know, this service being a first service for us like this on Zoom, it feels kind of like a rustic makeshift sort of service. It's strange. And yet, and yet sitting here in my living room, as you are all looking at screens or listening from your own spaces and places, whether you're home or traveling, there is such a striking beauty that accompanies what a year ago would have felt like really obscene and absurd and completely wrong to us. I imagine that in that moment, Mary probably went into this whole like, no room in the inn, can I interest you in a manger, sir, situation, feeling like it was not the way it was supposed to be. I mean, this isn't how we do this. I am carrying the child of God, right? That's not how it was supposed to be at all. And this, this wasn't what she probably imagined. But then after that pain and physical ex exertion of giving birth, after the exposed and awkward nature of, you know, doing that somewhere that was not at all equipped for human birth, even though we could probably imagine that, you know, for picturing our little nativity scenes, then uh, maybe there were some like calves born there at some point, but for certainly no humans were born in that space before. And, you know, that's, <sighs> The, after all that frustration of being able to plan out this birth in any way at all, I imagine after all of that, she's cradling this newborn. She looks sleepily down at this newborn baby Jesus as he's latched on and peacefully nursing. And the world is continuing on in its wildly unpredictable ways all moving around her and she realized that this was more than enough this strange obscene awkward and absurd space was holy this was a sacred moment that came out of the most unlikely and unsuitable of circumstances and so friends as we gather here tonight to celebrate christ's birth we can feel how the most unlikely, unsuitable of circumstances have become sacred spaces for us as well. God is in the tradition and the candles and with all those little like skirts around them that we have in church to keep us from dri dripping the wax all over the pews and God's in the building and is in the feeling of a hymnal in your hands as we sing Silent Night together. But God is also here. God is in each of our homes. The Holy Spirit is coursing through our internet connections and connecting us to one another. God is in the newness and the fact that some of us are probably like wearing church clothes from, you know, the waist up, but from, you know, down, it's like pajama pants and no shoes. <laughs> God's in all of this. God is among us. This year, as we think of that familiar old Luke narrative, we can see that the good news that it brings to us is that God comes to us, even when there's no room in the inn, even when all there is is a manger, even when we're apart and we've got Zoom. God doesn't see these circumstances as things that impede us from experiencing the love of our savior, Christ Jesus. And that friends is our Christmas miracle. It's just as miraculous now as it was, you know, 2020 years ago. So glory to God in the highest. And I invite you all now, as we move into this last part of our service, I invite you to get your candles that we have and dim the lights if you're able. And um, as we sing Silent Night, it'll be kind of, it'll be different, of course, but it'll also be 
like we're singing Silent Night together at church. So I invite you to do that. And let me bring up that, um, that video now. Let's see. Do, do, do. Screen. Ouch. 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 You're not helping. Well, what, how do you, what do you, well, you got my leg caught in there. <laughs> Well, can I get up? I don't know. <laughs> oh, thank you. And so from all of our wonderful and um, different spaces this year, as we see God coming to us in new ways, I invite you to lean into this new, strange and different celebration of the birth of Christ. <laughs> even with uh, my dog barking in the background and i <laughs> and i'm so glad that we were able to get together in this way tonight may god be with you on this holiest of nights amen and feel free to hang around for a few moments to chat and check in with one another it's so good to see each other's faces Hello. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Dot.